Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And every time I talk about tulips, which got a lot of tulips going on, I always get questions about why I grow tulips as annuals and if I could save the bulb, if it's gonna regrow again. So I thought I'd turn to the expert, Dave Dowling, cut flower specialist. So I chatted with Dave a little while ago. Say hi, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> My grandfather's here, he's helping me start seeds. But a little bit ago, I uh, had a quick Zoom meeting with Dave Dowling and I wanted to share that with you guys. He explains why flower farmers grow tulips as annuals. Good, yay, how are you? I'm doing great, how about you? I'm a little frantic this week, but it's it's a good frantic, it's just so busy. Right, tulips are blooming, you have stuff to pick and you still got stuff to plant. Yes, it's, and I can't. Yeah. We have um, a crazy stretch of 80, 85 degrees this oh. week and like scorching sun. And I have a, I do a seedling sale every year and I have a, a couple thousand cut flower starts <laughs> and veggie starts and that's this Saturday. So I'm hardening everything off and right. moving things in and out and yeah, it's crazy, but I have a lot of help. So we're going to get right. through it. I'll be able to breathe, I think, on Sunday for a little bit. <laughs> Sleep in on Sunday, right? <laughs> I know. Sleeping in is like six <laughs> i just realized i know who you are most people who follow me know who you are but for those of you who don't they're not familiar with who dave dowling is just a little bit of background in uh what you used to do and what you currently are doing okay uh my name's dave dowling i had a cut flower farm in maryland for about 20 years i closed the farm in 93 i think it was i'm sorry 2013 um started in 93 um, and then I went to work for Edney Flower Bulbs in New Jersey as a first worked in the warehouse and then sales rep for them. And then like three years later, Fred Glockner company bought Edney. So I then worked for Glockner, still selling Edney stuff, but also all of the stuff that Glockner offered. And then I, about a year and a half ago, December of 2020, um, the Ball Seed company bought Glockner. So now I work for Ball Seed, selling everything that Ball Seed has to offer in addition to Edney Bulbs. And the Edney flower bulbs are now available only through Ball. So you have to order them from Ball. Um, other things I've done is I was the president of the Association of Specially Cut Flower Growers, the ASCFG, for seven years total. I was on the board for a total of 11 years. Um, so I'm kind of retired from that now, still involved and still a member, but I don't make any of the decisions anymore. <laughs> not on the board. Um, and I also do the online class with the Gardener's Workshop, which is about annual uh, perennials, bulbs, and woodies. Yes, and that's where I believe that's where I first uh, learned about you because I, right. I did I took the course a couple of, I think three years ago now, uh, the yes. first year that it was offered. Right. Yeah. So. Um, and then I just want to say, then I was just scrolling through YouTube videos like you do on when you get lost on the internet, and this video popped up with you, and you had you mentioned me, and that's why I showed up, and I was like, wow, who is she? <laughs> so I've been following you ever since. Yeah, I think. I, it got to the point where I was like, hmm, what would Dave do in several of my videos? And then I'd pull up the course. And if I was planting irises or something like that, I would pull up the section for irises and refer to your knowledge. And that's how um, I basically planted most of the perennials on my farm. Yeah. It's still, I'm um, still expanding. I just grabbed it. Well, you know, I ordered them from you. Right. <laughs> I had some like false indigo and, and stuff like that, that I'm putting in this year. I'm trying to tone down the number of of things that I'm putting in all at once because right. you I did can't fall do behind. Them, you can't do them all at once. You know, there's no. dozens and dozens of perennials out there and dozens and, or hundreds of annuals. You can't be a new farmer or a new gardener and grow them all the first year. You just can't. Um, you gotta just, you know, do 10 a year and keep adding, drop a few that you don't like, but you you can't plant 30 new perennials in one year. It's just, you'll get nothing but a bed full of weeds. <laughs> you oh, get yeah. overwhelmed. Oh, definitely overwhelming. I have um, a little bit more on my plate than than I can handle right now. I every time I mention or show a tulip with a bulb attached, I get inundated with people right. because there's there's such a there are gardeners and then there are farmers and the right. gardening folks can't wrap their head around the fact that the tulip bulb is just not going to come back the following year. And I thought instead of me trying to explain it. <laughs> Yeah, it would be you. You are so eloquent in the way that you deliver it. And I thought people would um, understand and grasp it better coming from your mouth instead of mine. And I wanted to wear my Dave shirt today. It's oh, in very the wash. Good. It's in oh, the wash. OK, yeah. one thing for tulips are a couple of the um, Darwin hybrids that do come back if you don't harvest them, like if they just stay in the yard forever and never pick them, they will come back. But one of the biggest tricks with tulips is the bulb. Actually, the one you plant, it looks like a nice big bulb. 
next spring after it blooms and it's dying back, that splits in like three or four little baby bulbs in there. So most varieties then put up three or four little teeny stems the following year. This is if you don't harvest them and you don't get many flowers the second year. So maybe sometimes the third year they'll come back and have flowers. And this is some is home garden, but still they just, it's not worth it. You know, for the 50 or 60 cents for the new bulb that a retail person might pay, or even if it's 75 cents, you're never gonna get a good flower off of that bulb again. And <clears throat> I was trying to explain to people too, the importance of rotating your crops when it comes to tulips, because the, I always say I have to rotate my crops. Talk about mm -hmm. what can happen if you don't rotate your crops. If you don't rotate them, you can get disease problems, um, especially if you're leaving the bulb in the ground. In other words, if you're a home gardener or even a flower farmer who's pulling them and the bulb is staying in the ground, those are gonna rot and just increase the uh, chance of getting botrytis or what's called tulip fire, where they just get rotten spots on the leaves and the flowers and just ruins them. Especially if you have a lot of rainy weather when they're growing and blooming. That actually happened to me this year. I There were a couple of varieties that when I pulled them, they snapped right off and the bulb stayed in the ground. Right. And I didn't till that area. And then this spring, all of the greenery started to pop up. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna leave it and see what happens no Not stems much. came up and then right. all of a sudden it had tulip fire all over it it was yeah, all, all speckled. Right yep yeah so you want to rotate your tulips plant them in a new place every year if you're a flower farmer for sure if you're a home gardener you should try and rotate them and move them around but the uh, ideal time frame between planting in the same spot again is seven years for tulips a long time so even if you've got a a farm that you know only has 100 beds you got to be able to rotate those tulips so that you're not back to the original bed for another seven years because nothing's worse than having, if you're a flower farmer or a home gardener, having a whole bed of tulips look beautiful and then it rains for two days and they rot away and you've lost them all. And also the botrytis or tulip fire, sometimes some varieties are more susceptible than others. So you might have a bed that has 10 different varieties, only one variety gets it. But as soon as that variety starts to get it, you want to try and get it out of there because it will spread to the others. So it's like that one caught it first and it will spread, but sometimes you can clear out those bad ones and save the rest of them. A comment all the time is, um, why don't you give those bulbs away that you cut off from the tulips? Um, right. I, I, I guess talk to that. I just really, people can't get past this bulb yeah. thing. <clears throat> it's the same thing. Even if you saved and replanted them yourself or left that bulb in the ground to take it up and have it not have any leaves attached to it to photosynthesize and get the energy back into the bulb. If somebody were to take and replant that in the garden, it's not going to do well the next year. They, like the one that you had it come up with just leaves and no flowers. And that'd be really disappointing to somebody thinking, oh, I'm gonna plant some tulips and have flowers. The next spring, all they get is a bunch of leaves. And it might be two or three years and they might get a few little flowers. It's just, it's a very different way they grow the bulbs in Holland. If you've, if you've ever seen the videos online where they show them with a combine cutting the flower heads off. You know, they have a five acre field of red tulip and they're cutting the flowers off because they don't want the energy going to the flower, they want it to go to the bulb. But we don't do that here. We cut either cut the whole thing off, the leaves and all we use as a cut flower, or we let it bloom on the plant and it starts to make a seed pot and then it's just not regenerating the bulb. You need to have a, a perfect, good cut flower tulip and you're not going to get that by saving the bulb. Plus a, the a used old bulb to it. Yeah, the extra stem length of pulling it, yes. But even if you cut it at ground level or cut it and left one leaf on the plant, you're not going to get a flower next year that you can sell. It's not going to produce a good flower again. What are some words of advice to someone who would like to start growing tulips? I mean, tulips are, are kind of like <clears> the first <throat> thing that you can sell in the spring. They are, some right. people think that they're not profitable. <clears throat> I'm finding them very profitable. So I don't know where that's coming from. They're profitable as long as you have a place to sell them. That's like I said before, you got to go out and market yourself. Nothing's worse than somebody plant 2000 tulips in October and not know where they're going to sell them in the spring. Either they don't have a farmer's market, they don't have a farm stand, they don't have florists lined up and then they're blooming and then go out and try and sell them, that's too late. You gotta sell them before, or know where you're gonna sell them before they're planted, basically. Um, but to plant them in the fall, best time is usually around your last frost date. Uh, I'm sorry, your first frost date in the fall. So if your frost, frost is October 15th, that's when you wanna to aim to plant your tulips, because you wanna plant them early enough so they still have time to grow some roots in the fall, and then they're gonna um, go stop growing the roots once the ground freezes and gets cold, but they need to have that little time period to grow some roots before it gets real cold and you'll have a better tulip in the spring. Um, but plant them in usually mid-October or around your uh, first frost date. There's different ways you can plant them. You can dig a trench and lay them all out and then bury them. Usually you plant them what's called egg crate. If you're growing as a uh, cut flower, almost touching side to side in a bed. Um, a new way people are doing it now also is doing it in a raised bed by putting them on the ground and then covering with good compost that's well, uh, well rotted and well uh, seasoned, not real barky or, you know, still hot. Um, 
a lot of people are doing that. It's really successful. They come out really clean when you pull them. As long as the compost was good, they just pull right out and fairly clean. There's no mud on them. Um, and then you could just plant something else in that bed for the summer, some annual after the tulips are gone. Um, but to, to get them planted in the fall and harvest in the spring. And then there's another thing you can do in the spring. If you know you have an area, a place to sell them three or four weeks earlier is to put a small tunnel over some of them to wake them up earlier. And usually put the tunnel over them about four weeks before they normally would break the surface where, where you grow in your area. You know, in Georgia, it's much faster or earlier than Canada. Mm -hmm. um, but you put a small tunnel over them or it can be in a full size tunnel that you would then close up at that time period, four weeks before your normal uh, emergence. And it gets them ready three to four weeks early than that in the field. So you get an extra three or four weeks worth of selling tulips. So it means you can sell basically twice as many. Um, the thing is you cover them up and get it really warm. You don't have to vent it until they've sprouted and then just vent it on sunny days. But it really works to get them ready early. Um, and you can basically double your tulip sales. I did that this year for the first time. I took about, I think there were maybe 11 or 1200 in, in one of my rows. And we were nervous about Mother's Day sales because we had such a cold spring. Everything right. was delayed a couple of weeks. Our apples are still not blooming yet. We don't have any blossoms or anything. Right. Usually that's done by now. And no, nothing. So I did do that with the, with the small tunnel, the low tunnel mm -hmm. over it. And it really, really worked, yeah. really worked well. You get them ready early. The same trick can be used for peonies and some other overwintered plants to get them ready early. Um, I know people do that for peonies, get them ready for Mother's Day. I guess there's kind of like an explosion of small flower farms. Is yes. that what you're seeing in the business? Talk about what you're seeing on your end. Yeah, definitely a lot of new flower farms popping up everywhere, so to speak. I know the ASCFG membership in the past four or five years has gone from 600 to close to 3,000 members now. And that's mostly in North America, the few scattered around the rest of the world, but US and Canada mostly. Um, and just the number of customers that are buying cut flower supplies, you know, seeds and bulbs and such. I know um, literally hundreds of new customers a quarter or, you know, a month almost. And they're just, I think having the internet, people are going to learn, oh, that is a viable opportunity. When I started 20, well, it was almost 30 years ago when I started cut flower farming, th there was no internet yet. There was no Google. You'd, you'd find a book in the library and that was about it. Um, but now that there's the internet, Instagram, so many people are exposed to cut flower farmers and it's a viable opportunity or option for people, either younger people starting out or people want to have a career change where people, a lot of people are retiring. You know, they retire in their late fifties, early sixties and they start a flower farm. And if you, Put the work into it it can be successful as you can see you you know you have to put a lot of work into it it's mm -hmm. it's not a walk in the park <laughs> it's, it's work but if you do the work you can be successful with it yeah it's uh, a lot more work than i think people uh, uh, realize yes. <laughs> yeah and i always like to remind people it's it's not just growing the flowers sometimes the most important thing is selling them because until you sold that flower you're not really a flower farm and you're not paying the bills until you go out and sell them and some people neglect selling you know, they grow these flowers and they think they people are going to come running to them to buy the flowers, but you have to put yourself out there, whether it's going to a florist, going to a farmer's market, you know, getting on social media and marketing yourself. That's part of the going, part of the farm, part of the business. And I think for some people that could be the hardest part. Yes. I guess the most uncomfortable part. But right. once you start doing it, it does become, you, you get used to it and it's right. easier, you know, and you right. expect to get rejected. That's part of the process. Expect to say I, here, no, thank you. And that's okay. Right. You'll hear that and just go on to the next one. But it's no different if you're selling, you know, watches or selling anything. Somebody's not going to want what you have to sell, what you're selling. Just go on to the next person. Somebody needs your stuff and somebody wants it. Side note question, since I have you, um, my ranunculus is looking really, really good this year. Um, I have several dozen big buds, thick stems, but this week is 85 degrees and crazy. Mm. Um, but it's still cool at night, at nighttime. Is the mm -hmm. cool nights going to be my saving grace to get through this warm spell? Right. The cool nights are going to help. If they're in a tunnel, make sure the tunnel is completely open. It is, if you yeah. have the option, if you have the option of getting shade cloth on it before this heats up during the day, that would help. And uh, make sure they're watered and water early in the day with cool water. You know, okay. to make sure the water is not out in this, the hose is not laying in the sun first. But open that tunnel up and don't close it. And you don't need to close it again this year. Just open no, as, I haven't. It's been open for as days. open as you can get it, right? It's, it's fully open and much air circulation as you can. And the cool nights will help because that'll keep the soil from getting hot. As yeah. long as the soil stays cool, they should keep growing. Okay, good. That's about what I've been doing, except for I don't have any shade cloth yet. I need to get shade okay. cloth 
So, all right. Well, so the open enrollment for your course is coming up soon. Talk about what your course is and uh, what people can expect to learn in the course. Yeah, the open enrollment is in June. I don't remember the exact date. It's around June 9th to the 15th, I believe. And I have to look in the calendar to make sure. Um, and then the class actually starts the Monday after, I'm sorry, the Friday after 4th of July. Okay. Um, so it's always starts on a Friday. Um, the course is all about growing bulb crops, perennials, and woodies, and a little bit about growing in tunnels and uh, greenhouses. But there's another class with Gardener's Workshop that's nothing but tunnels and greenhouses with Steve and Gretel which is much more in depth with scheduling and all kinds of stuff. Um, I just talked briefly about what tunnels and greenhouses are, um, but it goes through each, each crop step-by-step, step, but here's how you grow it, how do you harvest it. Um, you know, there's one on tulips and lilies and hydrangeas, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's a lot of people, like you said, you go back to refer to it. I hear about that all the time from people who say they go back, I was getting ready to find the I'm going to plant Baptisia this year. So I went back and read that section again, because it includes over 30 perennials. And like I said earlier, you're not going to grow all those the first year. You might be three or four years before you get to a certain crop. Then you can always go back and look at it and, re and refresh how to plant it, what the spacing is, whether it needs sun or shade, that kind of stuff. It's been super the, helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and the class also comes with a, when the class is in session every week, a, a live Q&A session once a week. And then also there's a Facebook group that's these current students are in and when that class is over everybody gets put into one Facebook group that is all the alumni from my class and everybody's yeah. saying they're always helping each other I'm in the alumni group and always there's some you know almost daily there is good information even if yeah. it's somebody else <clears throat> asking a question that maybe you had as well and right you know either you answer it or somebody else in there answers it and it's a lot right. of sharing knowledge for sure right we're often a question that you didn't know you needed to ask. Exactly. <laughs> you didn't know you needed to know that. <laughs> well, I could sit here and chat all day, but I have to go rotate my tent that's over my seedlings so they don't get sunburned. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just can't believe how hot it is. And down here, we're only in the 70s, down in oh, Delaware. Yeah. 65 would be perfect. I really, I have yeah. a hoop full of ranunculus. I mean, 1,700 plants, and they all look oh. so good. And, and they're, just starting, are... they're just starting to bloom for you up there, right? There, I have my first one color cracked. Yeah, because you you spring plant them, right? Yeah, we're I'm a right. four B, so right. So you're planting I in sprouted March, them January twenty third. Right, and get them in there early March. Got probably. them in there in March in the hoop house. Right. I got them in mid March. I'm gonna plan for March first next year. I think I could push it a little bit earlier. Thank you. That is yep. that's all I needed to hear. All right, great to talk Thank to you. you. Yeah. All right, I'll take care. Bye. -bye. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed that chat with Dave. He's always fun to catch up with. If you guys want to be part of Dave's community, like I said, he's got a course that's going up for sale next month. When that date comes closer, I'll share some links with you guys. If you guys are interested in learning more from Dave, it's truly, when you take the course, it's truly like having Dave in your back pocket. So we're going to continue to plant some zinnia seeds here, but thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. Hi Dave. It's, it's sideways. It. <laughs> there you go. Okay.